Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in, amma ba'd. The last juz of the Qur'an is the 30th juz or para. It is commonly referred to as juz amma because that is the first word that it starts with. Uh, this juz consists of the most amount of surahs that come in one juz. And so uh, this juz has 36 surahs in it, and the majority of them are very, very short uh, surahs. Obviously, we will not be able to go through all of the, the surahs in these uh, few minutes that we have. Uh, so uh, the point here is only to mention uh, a few important uh, you know, points uh, regarding the general themes uh, of the surahs and perhaps pointing out um, uh, you know a special significance of certain surahs that are mentioned uh, here in this truth. Uh, firstly, uh, the, the, we notice that the surahs in this juz uh, there is a lot of discussion regarding uh, what will take place on the day of judgment. And so uh, if we were to contemplate over the first surah, Surah to naba as well as uh, the, the, the next uh, several surahs, uh, Surah to naba Surah to naziat uh, Surah to abasa At-Takweer, Al-Infitar. Uh, these first surahs that the Jews begins with, uh, there is uh, you know, um, a description of the Day of Judgment and uh, what will happen on that day, and also about Jannah and uh, the hellfire. Also, uh, among the themes of this juz is uh, discussion regarding al akhlaq manners or etiquette, uh, the, the, the virtue of good manners, uh, dispraising bad manners. And so, uh, if we were to notice, uh, you know, reflect over Surah Al Mutaffifin, uh, also Surah Al Fajr. Uh, Surah Al-Balad, uh, Surah Al-Layl, Surah Al-Duha, Surah Al-Ma'oon. All of these surahs, there is uh, indication about uh, Al-Akhlaq and the importance of Al-Akhlaq. Uh, also, uh, among the themes of this uh, juz is uh, con uh, concerning the Qur'an and how uh, the Qur'an is the truth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and so we have Surah Al-Takweer that talks about that, as well as Surah Al-Inshiqaq, and also uh, Surah uh, Al-Buruj and Surah Al-Tariq, they all mention regarding the Qur'an. Uh, also, we notice throughout the surahs of uh, this juz, uh, there are many places where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears, He takes an oath, by his creations, uh, you know, uh, in several surahs, in several surahs, uh, we have an example of this, uh, especially the beginning of the surahs, was uh, sama'i This is an oath that Allah takes by the uh, the, the the skies, the heavens, and at uh the night star. Uh, also, wal uh, fajr. Uh, by the, the, the Fajr, the, 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 the daybreak. Uh, also, Wadduha, uh, uh, Walayl. All of these are examples of Allah taking an oath. And the general rule in the Quran is that whenever Allah takes an oath by something, uh, it is uh, regarding something very, very important. And Allah does not take an oath by anything except that it is to prove something very, very important. And so the, the longest oath in the Qur'an is that which is mentioned in Surah Al-Shams. And so in Surah Al-Shams, Allah takes an oath by the, the, the sun, the moon, the, the, the night, the, the day, uh, and al-duha, the morning, uh, all to prove uh, Allah takes an oath by these things to basically prove the importance of tazkiyatun nafs.
purifying our souls. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا He will be successful who has purified his soul. And he will be the loser who neglects purifying his soul. Uh, also, we have throughout this uh, juz, Allah mentions, uh, you know, the previous nations and the punishment uh, that they were afflicted with. Uh, Allah mentions these nations and the punishment that they were afflicted with throughout the Quran. And they are repeated here in this juz, except for one. And that is Ashab al uh, the story that is mentioned in Surah Al Buruj of uh, Ashab al Ukhdud, the companions of the, the ditches, and how the believers they were thrown into these ditches uh, that were made for them uh, if they uh, refused to disbelieve. If they refused to disbelieve. And so uh, they refused to disbelieve, and so they were thrown into these ditches uh, of fire. Uh, also, uh, another um, example of a story that is not mentioned anywhere else in the Quran is uh, the Ashab uh, al the companions of the elephant, and that is regarding uh, Abraha and uh, his army that he sent to destroy the Kaaba, and so Allah destroyed him and his army. Uh, uh, regarding certain surahs in this juz and the significance of these surahs, we have Surah Al-Alaq. Surah Al-Alaq is basically the very, very first uh, surah that was revealed to the Prophet Wasallam. And so it begins by Allah commanding the Prophet Wasallam to read Iqra. And so this shows us the importance of, uh, uh, of reading and the importance of gaining knowledge, especially concerning the Qur'an. And so that is what the Prophet ﷺ was commanded to read, the Qur'an, the revelation. Uh, also, um, we have in this juz a very, very important surah, and that is Surah Al-Ikhlas, uh, Surah Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad, uh, the surah that the Prophet ﷺ said equals a third of the Qur'an. And so this is how important it is, and that is because it talks about uh, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so notice how this entire juz, notice how this entire juz focuses on three very, very important themes. The tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone deserves to be worshipped, and that we should attach our hearts uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not rely on anyone else besides Allah. And the second thing is, to perfect our akhlaq, so that we have the best of akhlaq, especially if we are going out there to invite others to Islam. And the third point is uh, remembering uh, the Day of Judgment, the hereafter. Constantly throughout this surah we have the importance of the Day of Judgment. Why? So that we prepare for it. So that we prepare ourselves for it. Uh, this juz basically uh, ends off with uh, the last three surahs, which are very, very important surahs. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Surah Al-Ikhlas and Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas. These three surahs we should recite uh, before going to sleep and they will act as a protection for us. And these last two surahs, Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to use these surahs as a protection, as a protection for himself from all evil and from all harm. Uh, this is generally what we can uh, summarize in a few minutes regarding Juz Amma, and with that we come to the end and the conclusion of uh, these uh, sessions that we have been holding throughout this month of Ramadan regarding uh, the summary of uh, the ajza or the, the various uh, uh, juzes of the Qur'an. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it to have been beneficial and to accept it and uh, to help us to uh, further our knowledge of the Qur'an and to further 
our, uh, you know, acting upon uh, the Quran and the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this book, this book of guidance that he has sent for us. Uh, with that, we come to the end of this session and the end of these sessions. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.